So let's write the equation for determining MUs for an electron field, define CF and how you use it, describe how TT is used, how does the inverse square law for electrons work, how do you find it, what is AF? So a lot of this is just based on the fact that you're supposed to know how to write the MU equation. So First, this is something you have to know. For photons, for electrons, you absolutely have to know these equations and you have to know everything that goes inside of them. So on the numerator here, we have our tumor dose. And then you divide that by AF. I almost just spilled the beans and said what they all were in the question, but that's not the point. Here, we are going to write this down and that is for electrons. Now, this looks a lot different than photons. Hopefully you realize that, but you must remember both. So what, that's the equation for a field for electron treatments. So CF and how do you find it right here? So that is the cutout factor. And this corrects the output for differences of an open cone and a cone with the patient's cutout insert. So when we do TG51, we're finding the output based on that 10 by 10 field size, right? Well, when we treat electrons, we have cerebin block in, and that's not a 10 by 10 field. So we have to determine how does, we have to create a factor on how does that output change because of it. Now, when you want to measure the cutout factor, essentially you want to put a, a farmer chamber past Dmax. And so this is obviously going to determine, be determined by what energy you are using. And you want to use solid water and you want to measure, typically it's 100 MU with the 10 by 10 insert in. And then you want to measure 100 MU with the cutout. Then you want to divide CF is equal to the cutout number. I'm just going to put number here divided by the open field number. And that is how you're going to get your cutout factor. You should do these pretty often if you're in a clinic, especially if you treat electrons. Hopefully you know how to do them. If not, there's a refresher. So the TT, so this is the treat to. Now, this is what isodose line that the physician wants to treat to. So if they say we want a treat to of 90%, that means that the 90% iso line is chosen. And so that 90% iso line gets the prescription dose. An interesting way to say it, uh, this is done in SRS, it's done in gamma knife, it's done using cone planning, it's also done with electrons. So know what TREAT2 is and how it can be used in the clinic. So now inverse square law, I'm going to jump over here actually because I've got a lot more room. So now the inverse square law, this is equal to the virtual source distance plus Dmax. And that divided by the virtual source distance plus the G plus the D max. And all that is squared. So the virtual source distance is something that they discuss it in con. You do this when you commission a linear accelerator. I strongly encourage you to know what virtual source distance is and how to determine it. That's a completely separate video, so I'm not going to go into it now. But electrons don't follow inverse square law based on what we know as photons because the electrons scatter off the linear accelerator parts, and ultimately they start acting as multiple sources. So they follow this somewhat pseudo inverse square over a small range from essentially a point in space that is called that virtual source distance. It is somewhat arbitrarily chosen, but you're going to measure readings at different distances and find the slope using the graph. And that's ultimately how you're gonna find virtual source distance. But again, that's its own video, something you do need to know, but look at that after this video. And then finally, what is AF? So we've gone through all the, all the factors and AF is our last one. 
And this corrects the output difference between a 10 by 10 cone and the utilized cone size. So all factors are normalized to the 10 by 10 cone, right? Because again, TG51, that is how we define our output. But what happened if you're using a 25 by 25? Well, obviously you're gonna get a lot more dose. And so that applicator factor allows you to adjust for the cone size. If you have any questions about electron MU calculations, please comment below. Know what all the factors are know how to use it. Ideally, have, ideally, you've actually used this in the clinic and plugged in the numbers and know you've actually measured the cutout factor. You know where to look up the applicator factor. You know how the treat two is used. And then you know where the virtual source distance and how to find the inverse square law here for electrons. So again, if you have any questions, comment below. Thank you for watching and good luck studying.